Pakistan were once the very best team in all of world cricket. With fearsome bowlers and a star-studded batting attack, Pakistan were pretty much unstoppable. Nobody wanted to play this team at home or away. Having once been one of the best teams in the world, Pakistan have fallen massively from this position. So let's take a look at the rise and fall of Pakistan cricket. Early challenges. Test cricket began in Pakistan all the way back in 1952, when the newly independent country was given test match status. It was a huge moment for Pakistan as they were finally able to compete on the world stage. Their first test series was against India, losing that series 2-1. But Pakistan were at least able to play the best teams in the world, drawing the Test Series against England in their first away tour. That Test match victory was a historic win for Pakistan and showed that they were a team to beat. Throughout those first few years, Pakistan had mixed results. They did win three Test Series at home against top-class opposition. The team's first captain, Abdul Hafiz Kardar, helped them to some brilliant victories and set up Pakistan for a brilliant generation of cricketers, as cricket was developing on the world stage. Those first 30 years of international Pakistan cricket featured a lot of brilliant superstars. Fazal Mahmood was a brilliant bowler in the 1950s, famously taking 13 for 114 in a massive victory against Australia. Hanif Mohammed put in various match-winning performances for Pakistan, having been with the team since they entered Test Cricket. Pakistan began the 1960s by failing to win any of the first six series before a 2-0 win over New Zealand. That single win was the only Test Series win that this team had in the entire decade. Throughout this time, Pakistan were seen as having some of the most talented players in the world. But they were inconsistent and often particularly struggled to win test matches outside of Pakistan. With five different captains throughout the 1960s, you can see the turbulence that was going on behind the scenes. The 1970s started off incredibly poorly, but it did also see the debut of some very important players in Pakistan's history. A young batsman called Javed Miandad made his international debut in 1976, the same year that Mudassar Nazar would make his debut. The early 70s saw Imran Khan emerge as one of the scariest bowlers to face in the world. These three would help Pakistan to an incredibly successful spell, emerging in the 80s. The landscape of international cricket was changing massively in the 1980s. Limited overs cricket was becoming more and more important, with the number of competitions growing. Pakistan had a new team, headed up by me and dad, and were initially led by Asif Iqbal in ODI cricket. 1975 brought the very first Cricket World Cup, where Pakistan struggled massively in England. Having lost their first two games of the tournament, a huge win over Sri Lanka was not enough for Pakistan to get out of the group stage. Similarly to in Test Cricket, Pakistan had some of the best ODI players in the world. Miandad had a brilliant record with the bat, while Imran Khan led an always changing bowling attack. They did better in 1979, reaching the semi-finals. Pakistan would reach the semi-finals in the following two tournaments. With new captain Imran Khan, Pakistan were emerging as one of the best teams in the world. They were the favorites heading into the 1987 World Cup, which was hosted by India and Pakistan. They certainly looked like the favorites when they won five of their six group games. But Australian pace bowler Craig McDermott took a valuable 5-4 in the semi-final as Pakistan crashed out once again. At the same sort of time, Pakistan were playing a lot more test cricket and picking up some incredibly impressive results. They beat Australia and India 3-0 in consecutive test series in the early 1980s, not long after India had been considered the best test side in the world. They were one of the few teams actually able to hold their own against the best team in the 1980s, the West Indies. Pakistan drew with the West Indies twice, including their tour in 1988, their nine wicket win. In the first series of that test is one of the best results in the team's history, thanks mainly to 11 wickets from Khan. Not long after that series, Pakistan were briefly seen as the best team in the world. They went 10 test series without a loss before Australia ended that streak. Things were just starting to click for Pakistan, but they were still facing issues off the field. Miandad was not always the most popular captain as there were two separate instances where players refused to play for him. 
They were often inconsistent, able to pull off some brilliant results while having some embarrassing losses. Pakistan did record a historic Test Series victory in the 1980s. The team's rivalry with India is by far the biggest. The 1987 tour of India featured four draws in the first four Test matches, often down to the slow pace of batting from both sides. But the pitch was a lot more bowler-friendly in Bangalore in the final game. In that final test match, they bowled India out for 145 and 2 on 4, picking up a 16-run victory to clinch an incredible series victory. It is the only time that Pakistan have won a test series in India in the more than 70 years the two teams have played each other. Success in the 1990s. 1992 was a crowning year for Pakistan cricket. This is a year where many saw Pakistan at their very best. The year began with the Cricket World Cup, which would be held in Australia and New Zealand. Pakistan were looking to avenge the losses of five years prior, with Imran Khan heading into this tournament as captain, knowing he would likely be playing his final ODI in the tournament. Having lost three of their first five, Pakistan were in danger of missing the knockout stages altogether. But they would win their last four, including getting revenge over Australia to make it to the knockout stages. A wonderful Inzamam al -Haq innings helped Pakistan to a four-wicket victory that sent them to the final. In what would turn out to be his final ODI, Imran Khan played a valuable knock to help Pakistan set a target of 250 that England would fail to catch. Pakistan were crowned Cricket World Cup champions, and it is still the only time that Pakistan have won this tournament despite making it to the semifinals six times. One of the reasons why many believe the 1990s Pakistan team to be the strongest is the huge amount of talent throughout. Wasim Akram was scaring every batter in the world in the 90s. Most of his over 400 test wickets came in the 1990s, and many consider him one of the best fast bowlers of all time. He was partnered with Wakar Yunus, who is also considered one of the greatest fast bowlers of all time. That 1-2 and two attack that Pakistan had in the 1990s made it impossible for teams to relax. Imran Khan was in the latter stages of his career at this point, but still had a massive role to play as Test and ODI captain. Miandad was similarly in the latter parts of his career, but just as he was getting close to retiring, Inzamam ul Haq would emerge as one of the best batters in the world. Pakistan also had Imran Khan, contributing heavily with the bat as well as their impressive opener Saeed Anwar. The Pakistan team of the 1990s had it all. They could compete in test matches and limited overs cricket. They featured players who would go down as some of the best their position has ever seen. They were led by brilliant leaders in Wasim Akram and Salim Malik after Khan retired. This was the very peak of Pakistan cricket. They looked unstoppable and like they would continue to add famous test victories and World Cup trophies to their trophy cabinet. Sadly for Pakistan fans, this is not the case. Instead, the team have failed to repeat some of the previous successes. The fall of Pakistan. The 21st century has not been quite as kind to Pakistan. In the 2000s and late 1990s, they saw various experienced players retire. Ul Haq, Akram, Salim Malik, and Wakar Yunus all retired around this time, and it left a hole in the Pakistan team. That hole was particularly noticeable in ODI cricket. Having lost in the final in 1999, they had a very different team under a new captain in 2003. They failed to get out of the group stages this time, with losses to India, England, and Australia all coming in heavy defeats. The lowest point in Pakistan's ODI history came in 2007. A batting collapse against West Indies meant that Pakistan needed to win their final two games. Instead, they were bowled out for just 132 and lost to Ireland, who were making their debut in the competition. They have not made it back to the ODI final since 1999. Pakistan have had more success in T20 cricket. They reached the final of the first T20 World Cup and won the competition two years later, despite losing to England and Sri Lanka before reaching the knockout stages. They were led there by Captain Yunus Khan, who played for Pakistan for 17 years. He is one of the highlights of Pakistan cricket in the 21st century, having retired as his country's all-time leading run scorer. In test cricket, Pakistan have had some stellar moments, but controversy has overshadowed those wins. Safety concerns meant Pakistan played their home games in the UAE for around a decade. 
the team faced a ball-tampering charge in a 2006 test series against England, as well as two Pakistan bowlers being caught in a spot-fixing scandal. Pakistan were briefly number one in the world in 2016, but this was only for a few months before losses to Australia and New Zealand. Today, they are all the way down in sixth, quite far off rivals India in second. They have only made it to the semi-finals of the Cricket World Cup once in the last 24 years and have not won a T20 World Cup since 2009. Having previously been the dominant team against bitter rivals India, Pakistan are now not on the same level as India. Their downfall has been difficult for fans to watch. The heights of the 1990s seem a long time ago now. Pakistan is hoping that their exciting young bowling attack and impressive batting with Babar Azam at the helm can return Pakistan to their previous glory. That was the rise and fall of Pakistan cricket. Why not put your thoughts in the comments down below? While you're down there, hit that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to watch this video next.